Okay, let's start off with MBTI, Myers-Briggs. A lot of you might have heard of this before. Uh, let's give you a real rough overview of what it is. It's one of the most popular ones. I've already mentioned that. And it basically assesses personality tapes based on competing inclinations that you might have. One, are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? Are you more person that is that is sensing? Okay, so what, kind of the rational approach, or do you use intuition more? Are you more a thinker or a feeler, which might be a little bit redundant with this? Are you more a judger? So are you good at, at dissecting what's right and wrong, one and zeros, yes and no? Are you more the judging type or more the perceiving type? Good, um, used to understand teams, team dynamics, communication styles, and personal development, but pretty much all of these models have that ambition. Let's see what are we are. Big five. This is, strangely enough, this is kind of the framework of frameworks, okay? This is probably one of the simplest ones. It breaks down uh, the assessment of personalities based on openness to experience, kind of that introvert, extrovert from a different perspective. Uh, conscientiousness. Conscientiousness, for those whose mother tongue is not English, means are you, are, do you follow the rules, uh, your own rules or the rules that are given? Are you, do you follow, do you follow procedures? Are you conscientious? Are you aware of what's going on around you? Extroversion, agreeableness, and I find this is very interesting, the concept of neuroticism. I'm not going to go into details. It's a psychological term. You can look it up. Um, but we all have some of these variables. By the way, there's no such thing as being just one or the other. All of us are kind of a mix. And here you have kind of a wheel that shows you, you know, are you more nervous or sensitive? Um, are you more secure or, or confident? Are you more innova uh, innovative or curious, consistent? And here you have this, this wheel, okay? Once again, used for individuals and for team development. The other one, which is really, really big, is DISC, okay? DISC uh, takes a little bit of a different approach. It has the color wheel. Okay, and the four primary behaviors that are looked at are dominance. How dominant are you uh, as a leader or a manager? Uh, do you work with influence? How steady or reliable are you? And once again, the word conscientiousness. You'll see that a lot of these models borrow vocabulary or lean on one another. Okay, uh, what does DISC help individuals understand? Behavior in the team settings, improve communication, and to uh, build a more effective working relationship. Here you have. Like I said, we might at a later time have somebody who's an expert on this who will bring in, but this is just a quick review. And we'll put this, um, this uh, PowerPoint or the PDF uh, in the link as well so you can download it if you like it. Now, this is one of my favorite ones because um, it was one of the first that I was exposed to. I like Belbin because Belbin doesn't assess your personality for the sake of assessing your personality. It assesses your personality to see how you fit into a team. I think this is a brilliant concept. Anybody who's ever worked in a team knows that the beginning of a team cycle does use a lot of a euphoria. Part of the euphoria is because you're thinking about new ideas and the diversity of a group makes things exciting. Brainstorming, right? It's exciting. Um, when you get into execution, that can become a little bit cumbersome and get on your nerves and we go from the forming to the storming phase for this exact same reason. But the underlying principle behind the Belbin principle is that you need to be aware of, of do you have the right composition of a team? Do you have different players? Because you don't need, if you've got nine people in your team, you don't need nine of the same people. So let's take a look at the, the distinct nine roles. You can like these terms or not. I don't think they're great. There's the plant, right? There's the monitor and evaluator. There's the specialist, there's the shaper, the mover and shaker, there's the implementer, there's the completer and the finisher, there's a coordinator, there's a team worker, and there's a resource investigator. Now, I don't always like these terminologies they use. They're kind of a little uh, fanciful and not always easy to understand. You can look up what they mean behind them. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between the different personality uh, trait models. Um, but if you do this test, it'll give you a breakdown and it'll tell you, do you have the right mix for your team depending on the context of your, of your endeavor uh, that you're looking at, okay? Now, these nine roles are usually broken down into three, uh, three overriding roles, which is, are you in the thinking role? Are you in the action-oriented role? Or are you more of a people person? Interesting, right? Yeah, it's kind of a good overview. 
it, what it's meant to do is help you understand team dynamics, enhance your team performance, and make sure you have the right composition. Great concept. Okay, good. Um, this is one that's very strong in Europe, although I, I don't believe it comes originally from Europe. 